Hi, hello everyone. I'm Bao Qi Sun, and here with me is my friend Dr. Chin Yi Lo. Today, we are very happy to share our recent research with colleagues from far underneath. The study is about the COVID-19 lockdown effect on Singaporean bilingual children's leisure reading. During our research of summer reading loss, we are keen to know how pandemic-related school closure may impact how bilingual children practice their leisure reading in their two languages. Leisure reading here refers to reading that children themselves choose to read rather than required by school or for homework. In this day and time, the importance of leisure reading cannot be emphasized more because it is closely related to a wide range of educational, social, and personal benefit. We were interested in looking at COVID-19 and when children were away from school because we found that, you know, that two months away from school is akin to the summer reading loss in the US. Although we don't really have long summer holidays in Singapore, uh, what happened during COVID-19 was that there was a school lockdown. Uh, the literature on the summer reading laws find that children lose the equivalent of approximately one month of reading proficiency when they're out of school. And we think that this prolonged absence from school during the pandemic could lead to the same loss. In addition, in the multicultural context of Singapore and over different parts of the world, little is known about how school closures or even this effect of summer reading loss, little is known about how it affects bilingual children's leisure reading in their two languages. So we started by asking two questions. What are the changes in bilingual children's leisure reading in their two languages during lockdown? And what are the challenges that they face? A bit about the Singapore context, we have a literacy rate of 97.5% and a bilingual education in Singapore, which means that English is the main language of education and business, with mother tongue languages such as Chinese, Malay and Tamil taught as a second language based on children's ethnicity and to some degree choice. More than 70% of primary one students come from English speaking homes uh, simply because English is so important in Singapore. Now, the English uh, syllabus have had a history of placing a strong emphasis on leisure reading. And more recently, the mother tongue syllabus is placing that same emphasis. Two months of school closure led to an emphasis on online and blended learning in 2020 in Singapore. So now let's move on to the research context. As I mentioned just now, in April 2020, uh, there were school closures in Singapore. This led to an interruption in the leisure reading in two languages study, which Baoti and I had started on earlier. In May, during the lockdown itself, Baoti and I re-looked our research questions. We felt that it was important to ask what were students reading during the lockdown. We added these questions and piloted them with one school. Subsequently, when schools reopened, uh, we issued the survey and it was completed by more than 2,000 English Chinese, English Malay and English Tamil children aged 10 to 11. Finally, we conducted a focus group physically in school with 36 primary four children in one primary school in September 2020. The findings of the study are here and Baoti will elaborate on them. Essentially, there was a lockdown gap between children's stronger language and weaker language, as well as between children who enjoyed and did not enjoy reading. We found that children's leisure reading in two languages are interconnected and that technology, despite the fact that there was online learning going on, was underutilized for reading in both languages and children face challenges in obtaining resources for both reading in print and using technology. Uh, before we share the major findings, here are two work clouds showing how children fail about the lockdown and how they fail about reading during the lockdown. To the children, the lockdown was boring and lame, whereas reading serves, serves as a source of enjoyment and relaxation. This finding highlights an important but less researched research area, that is, Leisure reading benefits mental well-being, and this gives us one more reason to nurture children's love of reading, as reading can be a very useful tool when facing difficult times in life. In the survey, we asked the participants how much they enjoy reading before the lockdown on the scale of 1 to 5. As we can see, there is a clear reading enjoyment gap between English and the mother tongue for all three groups of children. There is readily, and this is readily understandable, 
because English is their stronger language. We also asked them if they enjoy reading more than usual, about the same or less than usual in the lockdown. And we see a widening English mother tongue reading enjoyment gap during the lockdown, as across all three language groups, more children reported they enjoy reading more than usual in English than in mother tongue. Taken together, there's a lockdown reading enjoyment gap between children's stronger language and a weaker language. Then how about the reading amounts? Were they, were they reading more or less? Are there any gaps? This table shows children's changes in print reading amount in the lockdown. We asked them to indicate if they read less than usual, about the same as usual, or more than usual during the lockdown. We also provided two more options of having books at home but didn't read, and no books at home. Clearly, a larger proportion of the children reported they read more than usual in English than in mother tongue. We also ask about their reading in digital formats. Similarly, we see children read more in English than in mother tongue in digital format. More importantly, children may not use devices for reading purposes, as about one third of them reported that they have devices at home, but didn't use them to read. Taken together, the lockdown effect was not equal, was not equal across all languages and reading formats. Another lockdown reading gap we found is between children who enjoy reading and who did not enjoy reading. This graph shows the English results. We categorized the children into five groups according to their reading enjoyment in English before the lockdown. Within each column, the different color bars show how many of them reported they enjoy reading more than usual, about the same, or less than usual. Let's look at the left column first. The blue bar indicates that 55.5 of the children who enjoy reading very much before the lockdown reported enjoy reading more, more than usual during the lockdown. And the gray bar shows only 6.8% of them enjoy reading less. In contrast, let's look at the column on the right, which is about children who did not enjoy reading at all before the lockdown. 59.1% of them reported they enjoyed reading less than usual during the lockdown, and only 9.1% of them enjoyed reading more than usual. The same pattern can be found in Chinese as well. The lockdown effect was not equal to all children. And here are the results for Malay and the Taimo. The patterns are very clear. There is clear Matthew effect for all four languages. Children who enjoy reading before the lockdown are more likely to enjoy even more in the lockdown. And for their peers who did not enjoy reading before lockdown, vice versa. These results underscore the importance of nurturing reading enjoyment when schools, when children are in school. So to maintain reading when schools are closed. Another important finding is that there are clear cross-language relationships between children's reading in their two languages. As shown in the table, children's reading enjoyment in English before the lockdown are significantly correlated with, the, with their mother tongue reading enjoyment. Moreover, the changes of reading enjoyment and the amount of print reading during the lockdown are also correlated between the two languages. In the focus groups, we ask the children to share with us their experiences of reading a good English or mother tongue books. And the results show that reading as an enjoyable experience was not restricted to any language. Of course, the premise is that the books should be interesting and suitable to their reading levels. Technology and reading is also of our focus. We ask the children to indicate if they spend less about the same or more time on devices in their free time during the lockdown. Options of my parents or guardian did not allow me to use any devices and I don't have any devices were also included. Overall, very few children did not have access to devices and the very few parents intervened on device usage. Maybe parents were busy with working from home. Well, one quarter of the children spent about the same time on devices, more than half of them spend more time on devices. So here's the question. With more time spent on devices, did they take to technology for reading? Very sad, no. 
This table shows us the correlation between time on devices and the reading enjoyment and the amount of changes. Regarding English reading, time on device is negatively related to English reading enjoyment before the lockdown and reading enjoyment changes during the lockdown. Even though time on devices did not affect print reading amount, it did not lead to more digital reading as well because they are not correlated. Regarding mother tongue reading, we see time spent on devices has more negative impacts for mother tongue reading as it is negatively related to all mother tongue variables. From the focus groups, some children share with us how technology was in confliction with reading. So some children share with us they stop reading because uh, playing games or browsing social media is more uh, more fun. And also, they some children they they have they only week they only read during weekdays. However, on weekends when they have a device, they don't read. So together, our results show that devices were underutilized for reading purposes during the lockdown. And having access to devices does not naturally lead to more reading on devices. So what are the reasons or challenges faced, faced by the children? We propose that when it comes to reading, the participants in our study are native print readers rather than native digital readers. This is because they have been socialized into reading by using print books. When it comes to re reading on devices, they constantly compare their reading experiences between in print and on devices. From the focus group, we can see that children prefer uh, print because it provides a better and a smoother reading experience. It's easier for, for their eye when they read on the devices, they feel a sore eye, they, they, they feel it's difficult to navigate. However, when it comes to searching reading materials online, our participants are not familiar with how to search online, so they encounter a lot of difficulties. Sometimes, you know, you need to pay for to sub to subscribe to a certain website. Sometimes the, the reading materials they want, they cannot, they cannot find it online. So these results suggest that just as how we socialize our children into print reading, we should also carefully socialize them into reading using technology, because technology is going to coexist with reading. If we don't teach them explicitly, children, children would use technology for what they are more familiar with, such as social media, gaming, and watching videos. So what are the implications for reading during school closures? And uh, may I hazard to say also moving into the future, even without school uh, closures, you know, as we move towards online and blended learning. I think a key thing that we have found from this study is that reading should be integrated into online learning and that we need to strike a balance between children's two languages. So even when children are not in school and they're having online lessons, we need to ensure that reading, independent reading, leisure reading is integrated into our curriculum. Next, we need to consider children's knowledge of and access to reading resources in both languages and both print and digital formats in order to provide and increase their access to high quality reading materials. In order for children to find books that they like, they need to know how to do it. So a lot of us as educators need to provide opportunities to teach children how to find these high quality reading materials. Next, we need to provide more targeted support to less engaged readers. It may be that these readers are illiterate or that they are not as proficient, but I think during um, school closures, we need to provide that support and to nurture reading enjoyment in both languages and not just in one language. Finally, uh, the point that Bauti has mentioned earlier is that digital reading needs to be carefully socialized to children's lives as having more devices doesn't necessarily mean that children will read more. So we need to teach them how to read online, use online resources for reading. Um, so finally, in case you're interested, we have published two articles from this study. You can scan this QR code and access these two art articles. They are available on Computers and Education Open and AERA Open. Thank you.